What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and today I'm very excited to bring a brand new brand, a brand debut here for Baz on Blades, and I'm excited because it's actually nice to do a brand debut when you actually really and enthusiastically like the product, and in this case, that very much holds true. Today, we've got a brand debut from Petrified Fish Knives with their Victor model. Uh, this is a fairly new model from them. It is on the budget end of their product line. Uh, I do not know a lot about Petrified Fish, but uh, the company comes across to me as another one of those very high quality sort of premium budget brands out of China. We're talking about brands like Civivi, Underwee Knives, uh, Best Tech, uh, brands like that. All of those brands make fantastic product. And even though this is the first petrified fish model that I have looked at here at Baz on Blades, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, spoiler alerts, I'm going to make sweet hot love to this knife all through this review. So just get ready for that. Get you some tissues and we will get right into this. Let's take a look at the packaging. Uh, this is my first petrified fish packaging here. So uh, let's see, are we upside down there? Of course. There we go. There's everything you need to know about this particular version of the Victor. We will get into the different iterations of this here. And it's just a sliding box and the knife is uh, it's going to be in there. <clears throat> Sorry guys, in a little Ziploc bag. There will be a Petrified Fish branded tag on it. You will have to cut off. You've got a microfiber cleaning cloth. It's a little on the smaller side cleaning cloth, but good God, I've got like a hundred of these I've never even used. And you get some extra hardware. Interestingly enough, uh, from what I've seen of Petrified Fish, sometimes you get extra hardware. Sometimes you'll get uh, a different set of bearings for a knife, uh, maybe a set of washers for a knife that comes on bearings. Uh, giving you two different sets of bushings. Uh, in this case, you're getting extra screws, and they are black, even though the hardware on this particular model is in a satin finish. So, uh, I think as far as a package goes, there's enough there in quality of presentation. You've got extra parts and goodies. Uh, combined with what we're going to look at in this knife so far, uh, even though the packaging is not fancy, I still enjoyed that part of the purchase. Let's bring the knife back in and talk about the price. And I, I expect this knife to be hard to get a hold of, at least the first couple of drops. Um, I picked this one up. As typical for Baz on Blades lately, White Mountain Knives, no business affiliation with them at all. I've never even spoken to Justin. Um but he takes care of the knife enthusiast world he gives us the 10 percent discount codes and i don't have one set up you know me i'm anti-monetization and all of that crap but if you guys want me to set up a discount code with justin over at white mountain knives uh, just tell me in the comments, and I will, I'll reach out to Justin and see what he wants to do. Maybe we can work something out where whatever the program is, it can go towards, um, say, giveaway knives or something like that, since I'm not looking to monetize off of it. Um, but anyway, White Mountain Knives, you're looking at $45.99 before a 10% discount code. After that 10% discount code, you're looking at $41.39 shipped right to your door for this knife. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's worth it. It's more than worth it. Let's talk about the specs, get them out of the way. 3.6 inch blade length, that's about nine centimeters. Uh, blade stock thickness, 150 thousandths or 3.8 millimeters. So nice thick blade stock there. A uh, blade width, 1.15 inches or 29 millimeters. Handle length, 4.6 inches or 11 and a half centimeters. Handle thickness, just about perfect at 554 thousandths of an inch or 14 millimeters. 
handle width at the wide is 1.15 inches so about the same as the blade width and at 29 millimeters uh, closed width not too bad at all guys the blade nests very nicely within the handle you're looking at 1.4 inches of uh, closed width and that's 36 millimeters overall length eight and a quarter inches or slightly greater than 20 and a half centimeters stop pin diameter 135 thousandths of an inch or 3.4 millimeter behind the edge <clears throat> on this what i would consider to be a sort of like a saber grind um not too bad 17 thousandths behind the edge and that's 0.44 millimeter uh, it is on the slicey side of a being a cutter if you understand what i'm saying there's knives that cut they cut and then there's knives that they slice this is on the slicier side of cutting at 17 thousandths behind the edge handle to blade ratio is fantastic at 78 percent that is very good for a folding knife and weight is a substantial filling 4.94 ounces or 140 grams this thing is weight relieved uh, both scales let's see if you can see the circles that are cut in both sides are weight relieved i have disassembled this knife and i may do a disassembly video on it but it's pretty standard uh, modern uh, high quality chinese liner lock uh, bearing build sort of build and it's comparative to anybody uh, the only uh, differences are you know the finish surface finishes of the liners and whatnot between the brands they're all the same quality once you get into that realm of knives uh, let's talk about materials we're looking at k110 for your blade steel and everybody out there is confused about this blade steel let me tell you all about it because i just happen to be a k110 expert uh, i read about it on the internet so that means i know so k110 is bowler uterholm's version of d2 that's all there is to it as far as alloying specs it is going to be within whatever the industry standard variance is i took a look and it looks to be a, uh, about a half percentage at least within just standard az uh, d2 so you got high carbon uh, 1.45 to 1.6 percent uh, chromium is just about just about stainless you miss the stainless cut off by about a percent and a half so you're looking at 11 to 13 percent chromium it is a vanadium alloy tool steel uh, at 0.7 to 1 percent vanadium um, typically you'll see it rock weld 60 to 62 although that 60 sometimes drifts down to 59 with some brands and what you can expect out of this steel is good edge retention d2 will take a a pretty razor sharp edge it'll lose that razor sharp edge in a moderate amount of time but it leaves behind a lot of big tough carbides within that edge so it tends to lose its slicey razor edge and then go straight into a toothy working edge that just holds on for a long time uh, for utilitarian use uh, as long as I'm not going to be chopping with it or have high impact, I like D2's edge retention. Uh, I can strop it to keep it running along between resharpenings. Uh, it's semi-stainless, so you, you don't have a lot to worry about with corrosion, depending on environment and, and sort of how you care for things. Uh, impact resistance, like I say, is good on this. Uh, it tends to be chippy to, if you're too thin behind the edge or you run it sort of hot when you're putting the edge on it. Uh, it can be a little chippy. Um, yeah, I like D2 pretty well. Now, D2 is what D2 is, and a lot of people, uh, they're down on it. They get tired of it. It proliferates this sort of uh, high-end, budgety sort of knife build. But it's not a bad steel. Just because there's better steels does not mean D2 is a bad steel. It's just D2. So I'm okay with that, especially at $41, considering the quality and action of this knife. 
handle materials, stainless liners, ceramic bearings on the pivot and detent. You've got these beautiful, beautiful blue micarta scales. They're not calling them denim. Uh, they're blue canvas micarta is what they are, but it's that denim color and they are so beautiful. I love the, 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 the aesthetic appeal of this micarta to me is it's shocking. I really like it. Um, it's high quality. It's got a great feel, great coloring, everything. Every, I just love that micarta. Same micarta for the backspacer. All stainless small parts. T6 for your small screws. T8 on the pivot. A really good fold over uh, stamped stainless steel pocket clip. Two screw mount. It does recess into a slot between the liner and the scale. You can see that it is reversible for left hand carry. Um, the pocket clip screws, at least the back screw, the long screw, has to come out to disassemble the knife. Uh, I just took the pocket clip off completely when I disassembled just to wipe it down because it is mirror finish, um, unlike everything else. Everything else is more tool-like in finish. It's a combination of satin, stone-washed. Uh, it's subdued on the satiny sort of side and it looks fantastic little touches like that really really bring something together now let's talk about action it is a flipper knife it also does feature a large recessed area on the back side of the blade for right hand carriers for your spotty flicking action for you nose picking spotty flicking guys out there uh, it is very very well done um the action on this knife is explosive either way. It is enjoyable either way. It's just, a, as far as the action goes, it's a joy to carry. Uh, straight out of the box, it was drop shut smooth. Now I have disassembled this, cleaned it up. It was not dirty. I just wiped everything down. Um, I used my typical oil, putting it back together, and the action is, it's crazy. It is crazy. And I've got the pivot tightened down beyond the point where it snugs the blade on the bearings. Uh, it was a little too guillotine at that point for me, even though there was absolutely no slop in the action at all or the lockup. Uh, so I tightened it down a little bit to get that kind of hydraulic feel and as the oil that's in mostly in the detent track uh, that oil gives it that sort of hydraulic resistance feel the bearings for the most part they'll just roll free uh, that'll give you a guillotine sort of close but if you get just a little bit more pressure on it uh, um, it just feels a little more hydraulic to me in some knives and this one it worked out very well um, I'm so, I'm so impressed with this knife. Um, the fit and finish on it is beyond excellent. Everything about the way this knife is put together is flawless. I could not find anything, anything in the fit and finish of this knife. The surface finishing on everything is finely done. Um, everything feels high quality. Um, I like that they stonewash the liners. You know, they don't have a super bright finish on the blade here. It is satiny in its finish, uh, but it is sort of subdued. Let's get up here close to it. It does pick up fingerprints up there on that flat of the blade up here but you know what that's just what you're going to have to pay for that sort of finish it's not overly billboarded you do have some information on the back end side of it located well uh, and a font that works so it fits in with the design so it's not overwhelming not detracting from the knife itself uh take a closer look at this uh, recess for the 
river or the spotty flicking sort of open on it you can see all edges chamfered it's very deep now, you could not have done the same recess on the other side without breaching through the center there um so that's that's pretty much exclusively left hand i would imagine or right hand i would imagine um i guess left hand you can use it to you know as you're opening like a thumb stud opening so you could flick it open that way i'm sure uh, if i try to do that left-handed here on camera i'm gonna throw that thing across the table and stab somebody to death i'm that damn clumsy left-handed um <laughs> not... <sighs> i'm struggling guys i, I struggle reviews that are sort of negative where i've got a bunch of bad things to say although i'm reluctant to run down anything any brand on the internet you got to be honest but i hate doing it i hate to see something low quality those knives are easier to talk about than a knife like this this review it would easily become something that's just just sounded like me shilling for this company uh, but the fact is, I've never had any contact with this company at all, ever. I ordered this knife. I bought this knife as normal from Justin at White Mountain, who I've never spoken to in person uh, and have no business relationship with. So there's, I don't want to sound like I'm shilling for this company. There is none of that at all. I just love this knife. I mean, I love everything about this knife. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I love the materials. I mean, if you gave me an S35VN version of this and sold it for, I mean, whatever the appropriate amount the market would bear, under $100 maybe. I mean, we're at forty less than $42 here in K110. I've bought some blade steel before. i through my suppliers, the difference between K110 and S35, it would be very little. I mean, it really would per blank size. And then if you're buying it in bulk, you're going to do uh, even better. I believe they could do this in S35. Everything else the same. Change nothing but the blade steel. Do it in S35 for um you know 97 99 or some stupid bullshit like that and it would sell so fast that it you couldn't make them fast enough i mean this everything about this knife is a better better than you could ever expect at this cost and even twice or more than twice i've reviewed a lot of these uh high-end budget knives here at baz on blades <clears throat> from different brands and they all make great product this knife is as good as any of those knives this knife fit and finish wise is as good as a hundred dollar civivi at 41 dollars it is as good there is nothing absolutely nothing wrong with this knife right here everything about this knife is spectacular one of the hardest things to do in a knife like this in a sandwich build is do boxed scales where you're going to recess this scale back from the edge of the liner and sort of it's got that boxed in look around the edge this is so well done it is it is a visual feature in itself once you look at that you can't not see it from then on uh, every time i look at this knife the play of that boxing the finish of the liners and the finish of the blade it just all it works so well this knife looks fantastic closed it looks fantastic closed oh my god i am such a fan i am fanboying i'm gonna throw my panties up on the stage to this knife that's what I'm going to do right meow. I'm taking my panties off right now, throwing them up on the stage because I want to get backstage with this knife right here, if you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, look at that action. Look at it. Ceramic bearings, like I said. The only thing I did was take it apart, reassembled. I, you know, I cleaned the old oil off of it, put new oil on it. 
made sure to put a drop of oil on the detent ball. One of the most important things uh, to setting up your knife, especially in the modern age of flipper uh, bearing pivot knives, always put a drop of a lightweight oil on your uh, pivot ball not pivot ball, <laughs> detent ball. Oh my God, detent ball. That cuts down the drag there. Look at that backspacer. Let's take a look at that. It's interesting. It is, uh, it's shelved, but these shelves are cut in at an angle. And uh, I don't know that that actually does anything, but it, I mean, it looks cool. It looks cool. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, you know, I'm in a comfortable, I can fall right into this, you know, this back shelf here with the jimping on it, or I can wrap around to a nice, comfortable butt capping sort of uh, grip on it. Forward grip, we're good. We've got a, a nice, short, short run of jimping on the back here. Um, I wish this run of jimping was twice as long. That's probably the only change that I would make to this knife. Um, I, I believe that would be an improvement for just a few more uh, machining passes. Everything else, man. Oh, my God. Forward grip. Reverse grip is good. This micarta, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. This is the first knife I've ever had blue micarta on. And I mean, you may not be a fan of blue on your knives. I mean, that's cool. I can understand. Uh, but I kind of like blue. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful blue. I hope it's coming across very well on my video. Um, the lighting that I've got, my studio lighting, it seems to me a, to be a little on the cold side. So keep, uh, keep that into, in mind, take that into account. <clears throat> Stumbling all over my words here. I apologize for that. These scales are radially cut. All right. Um, it's not too wide as far as the thickness goes, the ratio there, and then the radially cut scales. It's a very good in the hand. Um, it's round enough to be comfortable, but it's flat enough to index and to aid in the grip to keep it from twisting in the hand. Uh, you are you feel pretty close up to the edge of the blade, although you do have a, a semi-finger choil sort of... Um, just a large aesthetic choil, basically. Although you can hold back against the front side of the flipper tab here, and you've got a, I feel pretty doggone safe right there as long as I'm conscious. You know, I stay back against. You can see I'm back against, and I'm not touching that. Uh, and I've got pretty, you know, chunky little fingers there. So I'd say that's going to be pretty average of what you can do. You're still up here on this short run of jumping. I think that would be pretty safe as far as the sort of in-between-ish choiled knives. Um, let's see what else is standing out to me here. You, I mean, you've got their branded pivot. Going sort of freestyle on this one, guys. Yeah, everything about this is super clean. It just screams a uh, high quality tool to me. Uh, the, the choices of the surface finishes, uh, very refined yet not super polished. Uh, I very much like that tool aesthetic, very high quality machined aesthetic. And that really, it comes across in this knife. You can see your uh, lock tab here is chamfered for her pleasure. And uh, I, I don't notice any sort of friction there. So apparently that works very well because it's giving me pleasure. Uh, son of a gun. This thing is so good. So good. Yeah. I'm going to highly recommend this, guys. I'm going to highly recommend the uh, Petrified Fish Victor. 
Uh, like I say, I like to support any company that supports the science and uh, the science of fish being scared, petrified, in fear of knives is well established. So there we go. I'm going to buy some more of this company's product. Um, they've got a couple of models. They've got the Beluga, the model that everybody knows about, sort of an EDC front flipper. The only reason I haven't already bought that knife is because it's a front flipper, and I, I hate front flippers. I just can't stand them, guys. Uh, I've only got a couple, and I just don't feel the need to add any more to my collection. And, I mean, that's what this channel is all about. I'm not just buying knives willy-nilly, everything that comes out. These are knives that I buy for my collection. They personally interest me to a level where I'm willing to spend the money on them to bring them through the channel here. But they are for my collection. Uh, the only other reason I ever buy a knife is if something comes out and I want to buy one just to do a giveaway. And I have recently done that and we'll be doing a giveaway coming up here soon. It's time to give some stuff away. I'm not giving this knife away though. I'm keeping this knife. Uh, I'm keeping this knife. I'm going to contact this company and I'm going to pass along my ideas for doing a premium version of this knife. And that um, the length of jimping on the spine of the blade, uh, although the, the quality of the jimping is very good, I'd like to see that actually doubled in length, the coverage. Uh, that would make... Um, yeah, that would open that up for different hand sizes and different uh, grip extensions very well. There you go, guys. The Petrified Fish Victor. You can get these for less than $42 at White Mountain Knives. Um, there's different micarta colors. Uh, I think you can even get it in like a green micarta with black finish blade and hardware. Um, that's going to look pretty killer, I would imagine. Uh, positive, positive, positive. Uh, feel like I just made love to this thing for nearly a half an hour, and I'm old, so that's really good. You know, at least do that three times a year, and you will keep that knife pleased. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching, guys. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again. Ooh.